And it's great to have you join us on another edition of the only weekend business program on Channel Television, Capital Market. It's the last one uh, for February. Well, I'm Laddie Williams. Let's begin the show now uh, with some of the major global markets we track outside our shores now, starting with Europe. Uh, we see after a slow start to the week, the regional stock 600 index uh, pushed higher um, over the last um, sessions on a mix of data and earnings, gaining by 0.4% uh, on Friday. We see the FTSE 100 uh, was about 0.28% at 7,706 points. Uh, the German DAX uh, also up 0.28% close on Friday, while the CAC 40 uh, in France that was up 0.70%. Let's move over to Asia now. We see Asia Pacific markets were mostly higher on Friday, with China stocks uh, rising for the ninth straight session as investors um, digested property prices uh, data. Uh, we see the Nikkei that was up 2.19 percent, uh, 39,000 points. While the Shanghai Composite that was up 0.55 percent. The Hang Seng Index uh, on the flip side that was down uh, 0.10 percent at 16,725 points. Let's take it to the U.S. now. We'll see what's uh, just the Dow Jones uh, average there, staying up 0.07 percent, a marginal rise uh, to stabilize, still hitting a new high. Uh, talking about the S&P uh, 500, that was down 0.06 percent. Uh, we see the tech-heavy Nasdaq held up, held down at 0.48 uh, uh, percent. Now we're seeing the U.S. markets there, not looking so bad uh, to close on Friday for the week. They're up. Uh, for the week, uh, most of them, uh, while the Nasdaq there was able to maintain a 17,960 points. Let's get a sense of how major cryptocurrencies performed this week. Now, it looks like Ethereum um, outperformed uh, Bitcoin for the week. We see uh, Bitcoin trading at 51,124 points. That's uh, up about 0.26% um, for the week. Ethereum, $2,945 for the week. It's up 7 uh, 0.39 percent. Cardano on the flip side that was up about uh, 0.58 um, cents, up 1.89 percent. XRP 54 cents, down 0.34 percent. If you can put that up uh, for the week, that's how the markets um, are looking right there in the crypto space. Well, the world's largest cryptocurrency trade uh, trading platform, Binance has confirmed uh, a blockade of its website and other cryptocurrency platforms, a uh, couple of them uh, to Nigerian uh, users at this time. Joining us now for analysis is Adeni uh, Lohoprok, who is crypto evangelist. I'm joining us via Zoom. Great to have you on the show. Yeah, it's nice to be here. Good evening. Yeah, so it's another day, another ban in the crypto space. How much of an impact will this have on crypto traders in Nigeria? It's going to have a massive impact on crypto traders in Nigeria in terms of short term. But if there's one thing that um, the crypto industry in Nigeria has always had and has always learned to do is always look for alternatives. If you remember that this P2P push about four years ago, the P2P market in Nigeria was not huge because many people were trading directly on exchanges. But the CBM ban on cryptocurrency forced many people to trade P2P, right? That's why started to trade more on P2P platforms. And now with the ban on um, Binance, which has the largest P2P market in Nigeria, I see more people moving away from controlled areas to places like Telegram, moving to other exchanges. And one of the problems that this brings is that, at least on Binance, Binance has been able to form an exchange platform that is trusted, that is, prop that is secure, and um, that is not prone to scams. So I will not be surprised if we begin reporting huge number of scams due to the fact that crypto traders are having to move from a verified and trusted platform like Binance to unverified platform or like informal way of trading P2P. Yeah, so so definitely uh, people might end up losing money, you know, moving to yeah. um, other platforms. You're still trying to uh, play in that uh, P2P market. But, you know, going forward, what are you seeing uh, for the P2P market in 2024 in Nigeria? I still see it's growing because um, as long as there's a demand for a commodity, we'll definitely have people that trade it. And I was actually surprised by the federal government's approach towards blocking those platforms because if there's one problem that I see that our government tends to do is that we ban things before thinking about it. Because this P2P issue that, we are, that the government is claiming is pushing the Naira down, 
was actually forced by the blanket ban that the CBN did on cryptocurrencies about four, three to four years ago. That was what made the P2P market to boom. And another thing too is that um, the P2P market, most people that are trading on the P2P market have to be like educated. So the P2P market is, I cannot truthfully say that it doesn't have an influence on the current um, pricing mechanism that is happening within ERA. But the truth is that people that are trading on P2P are trading a stable coin that is independent of USD. Even though we say USDT is backed by the dollar, we all know that USDT is printed by Theta, a company that doesn't have any ties to the US government. So putting the blame on Binance or P2P traders for making the Naira to go down is just similar to what the CBN did a few years ago um, you, um, on Aboki FX, saying that Aboki FX was fixing the price of yeah, in dollars in the country. And we can see that two years later or a year later, that's not true. And um, even though the short-term effect was that the price of Naira to USDT went to 1,300 about three days ago when the news broke out. But when I was checking the market before I came to the show, I saw that the market has risen to about 1,680. And you have to realize that this is weekend where the market is usually low because of low trades and low orders. So I expect that by Monday, Tuesday, we are definitely going to, if the market forces that are causing the slide of the Naira persist, then we are going to see the Naira to USDT rates go to about 1,900 to even 2,000 if the slide persists. All right, definitely. We're all hoping for some stability in the um, yeah. FX market, you know, going forward. And definitely this would impact, you know, the crypto community, you know, with this uh, restrictions we're seeing at this time. But it's still a developing story at this point. We'll keep tracking uh, to see how it all plays out. Thank you so much uh, for joining Adeni Oluwaporoku, Crypto Evangelist. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for having me. All right, let's bring it home now. We'll see the NSD unlisted securities market closing the green. Uh, the index rose by over 3% to close at 1,188 points. Also, turnover for the week was positive as volume uh, rose by 28.8%. Value traded, uh, it rose even higher by 374% uh, percent to one7 uh, billion Naira. Arado Holdings PLC recorded the most significant gain. It rose by 10.16 percent, close at 2,700 Naira. All right, let's uh, get a check on the listed uh, market now. See that uh, on the flip side is negative sentiment uh, that dominated the domestic equities market as investors again take profit. The result: the all-share index uh, declined uh, by 3.44 percent week on week. Uh, this uh, week's dip has uh, decreased uh, the month's positive return to about 0.92%. Activity levels remain weak as trading volume and value declined week on week. Analyzing by sectors now, the consumer goods counter was the major gainer, followed by a marginal gain in the oil and gas counter, as all other counters uh, we tracked uh, declined. Julie PLC again topped the gainers chart for the week, while Morrison Industries PLC led the declining stocks. Meanwhile, the trio of Guarantee Trust Holdings, FBN Holdings, and Transnational Corporation PLC top trades by volume. All right, let's get a sense of uh, what happened in the market um, this week. Uh, joining me now is Nathaniel uh, Disu, Investment Research Analyst at AfriInvest um, Consulting. Great to have you on the show. Yeah, good to have you. Um, good to have you, in, Ladi. Yeah, so it's still, still all about um, FX. Uh, this week, we've seen... A lot of uh, moves there by the CBN. And um, now it's for uh, the guidelines for BDC operators. The central bank is considering increasing the share capital of uh, BDC operators to 2 billion um, naira and 500 million naira for tier one and tier two licenses. How are you seeing this? Okay. Yes, we received the um, guidelines from the CBN, I think, yesterday or so about the new capitalization of the BDC. So what we are saying is that this CBN is trying to bring a form of, let's say, stability and control in the um, FX market. And if we remember that the BDC operators, they are about 5,000 in number. And the federal government a few months ago even made a, uh, let's say, suggestion that BDC should be reduced to about 200. So what we are seeing from the CBN is that with this new recapitalization move, it will bring more stability or control 
in the FX market amongst the amongst the PDCs because when you have a large number of um, operators in the market, it might be challenging to bring checks and balance, a level of control and regulatory scrutiny in the market. But with this recapitalization, you could remember the previous capitalization was about 35 million um, never um, capitalization. But now you see that the for the tier one PDC, the the capitalization has been raised to about two billion. Why for the tier two is about five hundred million. And if you, in the guidelines, CBN also gave the let's say conditions of how they can operate for the tier one PDCs. It, they can have the like a nationwide license, and they could have um, multiple branches and also franchises. But for the tier two. PDCs, they can only operate in one state or the FCT, and they cannot have more than three locations, and they can have no franchise. So we have seen this move by the CBN to bring a form of stability and control and more regulatory scrutiny in the um, BDC and FX markets. Do you think the BDC operators will be excited uh, by these uh, new guidelines? Okay, so it remains to be seen because one, uh, the um, upcoming president, that is the um, regulatory, the, the association body for the PC, for the PDC, they um, earlier on, would I say, kicked against the recapitalization uh, move by the uh, CPM because they were like, um, BDCs are not deposits. They don't take deposits. They don't take loans or something. So they were not in support of the capitalization move. So it remains to be seen how they would react to this because they were not in support of the recapitalization move. But now the CBN has already come out to bring this regulation. So it remains to be seen how this would play out, especially in the coming week. And it will be interesting to see how that turns out for the BDC operators and also for the CBN. Right. Let, let's um, look at the equities market now. We see it was bullish for January. You know, with the all share yeah. um, index recording about 35.3% gain. But well, February is uh, looking quite um, different. It's looking like it's uh, profit taking this month. Yes, so that's what we've been seeing. And um, in January, we saw that there was a let's say follow through from the 2023 gains in January, and most likely, we, most most especially, we saw the banking stocks gain so much in January. We saw so many banks um, even hit the one trillion. Nera capitalization and also so there was also that anticipation of the um, FY numbers for 2023. So that anticipation led the bullish run in January that the um, index gained about 35.3 percent, almost hitting the full year returns of 2023. But what we are seeing now in January is that most of these companies have already released their earnings for the year. So there's a lot of profit taking that is happening, which was which is expected to, because at that the rate at which the index was um, was rallying in January, it was really really it was not sustainable. So there was that need for correction, and also most especially we could see there was um, two bits auction about two weeks ago. So that gave a form of the allocation of capital from investors. So they've kind of locked in the gains that they've made in the equities market. So they are now diverting funds into the uh, fixed income market. We saw Treasury Beach auction about one trillion naira happened a few weeks ago, and the rate was as high as 19%. So definitely, it was expected that institutional investors would kind of reallocate funds and their capital into the FX market. So that's one of the reasons why we've seen um, February not too bullish. And as a matter of fact, it was actually for the month to date return as at Wednesday, it was negative. But as at yesterday, it turned positive. And the reason was that for those uh, bond auction, the FGM bond auction happened about, I think, Wednesday or so, and there was an undersubscription of the bonds auction. So the um, DMO um, anticipated to raise about 2.5 trillion naira in that auction, but they ended up raising just about 1.49. So there was a little bit of unmet bond allocation. So we're still seeing a bit of... Um, indecision by investors about either to switch towards the fixed income uh, market or still stay in the equity market. But overall, we are seeing the fixed income market get more traction in the past few weeks. And that's why we've seen February was a bit bearish, why general was fully bullish.
Right, quite quite a lot of decisions for investors to make right now yeah. in this uh, market. Not an easy time uh, yeah, at absolutely. all to be yeah, an investor. But we'll continue the conversation um, right after this break. We're we'll take, taking a look at what to expect uh, for the first MPC meeting in 2024. That's next. Do stay with us. Welcome back. Still taking a look at how your money performed down this week and what to expect going forward for the equities market, fixed income market, as the MPC is prepared to meet uh, in the coming week. I still have with me Nathaniel Disu, Investment Research Analyst at Afri Invest um, Consulting Limited. Uh, thank you for staying on, um, Nathaniel. And, you know, talking about the fixed income uh, market, you know, getting some interest, you know, at this time. We've seen those auctions by the CBN. Um, is it uh, safe to say 2024 might be the year for the fixed income market in Nigeria? Okay, yes. So for the fixed income market, let me start from the um, money supply data that was released in um, for, for January that was released a few days ago. We could see that the money supply was about 19% from 78% trillion naira in December to about 93.7 trillion naira in January. So it means that there's a lot of money in circulation, a lot, lot of liquidity. And what the CBN is trying to do is to mop up liquidity. And that's one of the things we've been seeing in the recent auction from the treasury based auction that I talked about earlier. And so that's one of the things that they are trying to do to mop up liquidity because as the money supply is increasing, it's difficult for it to fight inflation. And for general inflation, inflation rose to 29.90%. So inflation is on the rise. And if the money supply keeps on increasing, it's more like as if you are counterbalancing what you are doing. So we, we, we are likely to see a lot of um, auctions still coming up by the, um, by the um, Apex Bank to help mop up liquidity. And talking about the um, MPC meeting, for the, um, for the Cardoso-led administration, this will be the first um, MPC meeting that would hold, and it's going to hold next early next week. So, from our analysis, from our um, weekly report at Afi Invest, we are anticipating that rates would be increased to from about um, between 100 to 200 basis points that would bring the NPL to about 19.5 percent. And the last MPC meeting that was held was far back as July 2023. And as at then, the NPR was about 18.75. So we are seeing, we are expecting um, rates to increase for, to between 100 to 200 basis points that will bring the NPR to between 19% and 20%. And one of the reasons why that is being expected is because, like I talked earlier on about the liquidity um, issue or the, the rise in money supply in circulation. Also, the recent data that was released the recent GDP data that was released for Q4 2023, we saw GDP rise to about 3.5%. So there's a lot of decisions. And this is, this will be the first MPC meeting for the Cardoso-led ad, um, administration. Stakes are high. Everybody's anticipating and looking forward to what they would, what the, um, MP, uh, what the MPC team is going to decide on the rates. And looking at, you know, the former leadership of the CBN, you know, to tackle inflation, the raise, uh, raise to, you know, record levels, you know, not seen uh, in a while. But still, you know, we saw the equities market in Nigeria. That still did well, you know, in 2023, even to the beginning of 2024. So do you see um, this happening in 2024? Will the equities market still do well if rates uh, keep going up? Okay, thank you for that. So for the equities market, remember in 2023, one of the major drivers for the bullish run in the equity market were policies, um, policies land uh, by the new administ administration. We saw policies ranging from the FX um, revaluation and also the fair subsidy, uh, also the first subsidy removal. So those were one of the major triggers that pushed the equities market up. And since there was a lot of money in circulation, so the money had to go somewhere, and that's why we saw the equities rise. But now we are seeing huge, um, significant interest in the fixed income market. So likely we are going to see a lot of um, portfolio reallocation or readjustment in the first 
few months in 2024. We've seen activities in the fixed income market and we've seen what the equities market would do. Never forget the 2024 um, analysis for the equity market is a little bit, we don't expect um, the rate, we don't expect the OSHA index to rise the way it was in 2023. Because in 2023, like I earlier on said, it was a new administration, so a lot of policies were being laid out. But now in 2024, governance is kicking place. place. So the artist, or the rate at which the equities market moved in 2023, we're not expecting to see that in 2024. However, we still expect the 2024 market to see the bullish because down the line in the year, we're expecting some um, the the recapitalization um, talks of banks by the CBN um, by the um, CBN. Yes, that is still going to come up, and also we're expected to see some listings by some major companies on the on the exchange. So those two major decisions are are likely to push up um, equities this year. And right, um, this year now in investors are, are having to deal with a weak currency and a weakening currency. They're also um, dealing with high inflation um, at this time. How do you think retail investors can convincingly beat uh, these two heavyweights in 2024? Is it possible? So for retail investors, one of the things that I would like to talk about for for, for retail investors that they need to be a lot of caution because the 2023, it was super bullish. So there was that tendency for people to just rush into the market and have a share of the buy. But now that we're seeing a lot of, a bit of correction and stability in the index. So retail investors can still come in, but they need to be a lot of caution and need to get a lot of study because you need to be informed. It's not just by jumping on any stock that moves that you hear that this particular stock is valid or to jump in it. You need to take caution and also investors need to look out for stocks that are fully stabilized, stocks that have good dividends um, history. And yeah, those stocks that have good dividends history and also resilience. One of those sectors is like the banking sector. Over the years, the banking sector has always resilience. So those are the first that retail investors need to take note of if they are to play in the equities market. All right. So um, uh, we're, we're, we see we saw profit taking this week in the market. What are you expecting? You know, next week, uh, knowing fully well that the MPC are, are going to meet. Um, that's on Monday and Tuesday. What are you expecting for the market? So for the equities market, we we still expect a bit of the same for that which has happened this um, this week. Also, we th there's still a little bit of back and forth between the fixed income markets. Like I earlier on talked about, we saw the treasury this auction rise, and also for the FGM bonds, there was a little bit of under subscription. So depending on what the outcome of the MPC meeting, that would determine the direction of the market, either in the fixed income um, aspect or in the equities market. So any decision that will be made would be after the uh, the MPC meeting has been done. Then from there, we'll get the exact um, MPR rate. And from there, we'll, investors will determine which direction they want to play. All right. Definitely be watching out for how it uh, plays out uh, next week. Thank you so much uh, for coming on. Nathaniel Disu, Investment Research Analyst, Afinvest Consulting Limited. Thank you. Thank you very much, Ladi. All right, now let's take a look at some top stories this week now in the markets. Now we're seeing a bit to address the challenges posed by volatility in the foreign exchange market. The Central Bank of Nigeria has directed the Nigerian Customs Service to adopt the FX closing rate on date of importation form. Uh, that's the form M uh, for import uh, duty assessments. It means that uh, importers are now able to clear their goods using the closing FX rate on the date the importation document, uh, which is the form M, was submitted as this rate will remain valid until importation um, is uh, terminated and the goods are cleared. And to the telecom space now, SID National Bureau of Statistics says the number of active voice subscribers in Nigeria increased uh, to 224.71 million in the fourth quarter of 2023. According to the NBS, the figure is higher than the 221.76 million subscribers recorded in the third quarter and 222.57 uh, million posted in the same period in 2022. Also, the report shows that the total 
of 163 million active internet subscribers recorded in the last quarter of 2023 were compared to 154 million. So, uh, well, from, from the data, it shows that uh, the telecom industry there was seeing active subscribers um, growing vote for, uh, both for voice and um, data subscribers. We'll see how that's going to impact uh, the telecom stocks uh, in the market. All right, that's how your money performed um, this week. We'll definitely be looking out for next week where we have the first MPC meeting in uh, Nigeria for 2024. We'll see how markets uh, react to that. Thank you for watching. I'm Laddie Williams. Remember, if you must take profit, find the top.